Welcome to Biker Life Radio with Chuck and Deb, heard each Wednesday afternoon on 1490 AM, WWPR. And now, here's Chuck and Deb. Hi, I'm Chuck. And Deb. And welcome to Biker Life Radio. We're so truly grateful and thankful that you've joined us today. We have a fantastic show lined up just for you. Biker Life Radio is for those who ride and those who inspire to ride. We are here to reveal the truth behind the motorcycle mystique and bring real life stories of the biker lifestyle. All right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right today's show sponsors are tony and guy hairdressing academy out of colorado springs colorado and Coeur d'Alene, idaho so if you are ready to crank up your engines put your chins in the wind knees in the breeze seats in the saddle then hang on and let's get rolling here we go it's time to burn some serious rubber <laughs> yeah really it is okay let's burn on baby all right we've got to do something get bored inside the house really yeah Okay. I am. All right. I get it. And you, you can imagine that probably most everyone else is feeling the same way, just a little bit bored with all of that activity just happening inside the house. So do we really think that people are really confined to their house? Oh, yeah. I think a lot of people are. Okay. We've been out a few times. I mean, we have to go out once a week just to go to work, you do some things outside of here. And then, uh, you know, you go out more often than I do. You grocery shop and do all that kind of thing. So you probably would know better than I am. So it's a different world, you know, and that's why this is going to be a little bit of a different show because we haven't been out biking. We haven't had any bike events. We haven't talked uh, any any bikers in probably over a week. Right. And uh, so it's a little bit of a different show. Uh, it's a different time that we're living in. And we uh, are really stuck. We're stuck at home. We're, we're, we're locked up, like they said. Not not locked up. You you hated that term. I hate but that But what, what do they say? I, I don't know, but I hate that term. Locked up to me is just so Yeah, we're not locked up. There's no doubt you know, about I it. Do locked the, up is a bigger deal. I do have the freedom and ability to go outside of my home. And, and ultimately, not for long, though, with what's cho- going on. We're choosing not to uh, day by day. So I do. I get to the grocery store. And here's the one thing that I've noticed has recently changed. In the beginning, in the beginning of uh, April... The grocery stores, when they put the stay-at-home order in place, the the grocery stores were pretty quiet. Very few. All of a sudden, I was at the grocery store a couple of days ago, and I can honestly tell you the store was packed. Now, a couple of things that our local area has done, they've made the aisleways in our local grocery store one direction. Now, I think that that has been a misguided decision because what happens if you have two shoppers that are not far from one another, both shopping on opposite sides of the aisle? Now, I, as the person that wants to get through the aisle, has to sit and patiently wait. And what I saw several times over and over again is that people are not respect- respecting each other. They didn't realize that I was behind him. I didn't I didn't say excuse me, so I guess I wasn't upfront and aggressive with my grocery shopping, but I didn't feel I needed to. You know, we're all trying to be respectful of one another and just do what we need to do. Well, I think you're wrong. <laughs> okay. I actually I don't I don't I'm not sure, you know, as part of something else that we do for a living, I'm not sure there's a there's a there's a, a perfect way of doing it. Actually, I think what they tried to do is keep people from passing in they the, did. That's passing they, each other, yes. coming close to each other. Yeah. But you know, it's a great idea. I mean, they're you know, to to think think of it. They're just trying to mitigate it. <laughs> right. There's that word, right? <laughs> yeah. The best that they can. Yeah. The best that you can. And, and then what so are you gonna do? You're you're keeping people because actually if you think about it, Deb, it might be a little bit better than I I hate that we we're even talking about this on the show. But it might be a little bit more that where it's organized and the flow goes rather than you having multiple people on the aisle you can have only so many people on the aisle and everybody should know the rules that you stay six foot apart well and i'm going to bring this back home because i truly believe that this is very similar to driving and riding because you know what if you're gonna pass the guy that's going in the slow lane the person that's on the right hand side of the lane guess what you go around them and you move over as well people are not participating in that way they're going to the left and they're getting in the other lane of the aisleway and they stop and so it's like you've got just like when you've got 
people that are going slow in the fast lane. It's the same thing in the grocery store. You've got two people that are parallel with one another. They in the shouldn't same be lane. parallel. They are. They're, they're not Why would far they be? Off. Isn't that the reason that they have the arrow so people well, can walk down an aisle six foot apart? Right. But this one, one is looking one direction, one's looking the other direction, and they're both kind of, they're, they're staggered slightly. I won't say side by side, but they're both in the aisle way, very close to one another and they're both stopped looking on the on the shelves so it has defeated the whole concept I don't, I don't know. of passing and all that sort of stuff so kind of bringing it back to the road let's, let's just think. get over that because it's another one of these things we're not going anywhere we have on no it. control over nope. i know we just got to deal with what we got to deal with we are where we are we're in a u- unique time unprecedented uh in my lifetime yep. and uh it might change uh the way things move forward from here uh, i'm uh, kind of curious about that you know, we'll have to wait and see. But today, you know, <laughs> it's been a chore for us. We've had uh, AC issues. Oh, gosh. And uh, last week, the AC issue, what are you doing, Deb? A couple of days ago, we had this AC issue. All right. It has Well, that been. was last week, if you think of it. Was, well, pretty close well, to, yeah, right. last week. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to argue on the air about when it is. No, not at all. <laughs> She's right, but it doesn't matter, does it? Anyway, <laughs> whenever it was, our AC went out. I went out there and pampered it a little bit and was able to get it to restart, and we survived. Then, just the other day, yesterday, in fact, the AC went out again. And I couldn't help it. I couldn't do anything. So we had to wait. And the next day I went out and picked up a capacitor. Right. And was able to get it running. And now we have AC. Thank goodness. I know. So how many women, I think, in our audience would be willing to sleep overnight with no AC? When oh, the, come on. The that high, was nothing. Oh, you know, really? The high that day was 90. You know, Deb, you I have to drink you enough till you fall asleep, you pass out, and you wake up the next day. It's no big deal. Okay. So that's what I did not do the right way. Right. I, I yeah. tried to get okay. you to understand, but, okay. you know, you you grew up in a box, goody two-shoe, but, stuff like that. But kudos to you because you are you truly the gift that you've been given is research and problem solving i thought about that this morning and you do have this ability to dig in and do some research and find a solution to no matter what the problem is most of the time and and you're not an easy give up kind of guy so you know kudos to you it was a capacitor it was a pretty inexpensive part 26 dollars went out and got it i could have got one for three if i'd had you wait for two days Uh, i could have got to pick up the pet capacitor for four Four dollars. Well, I've got a spe- under four dollars. I've Deb. got a special day coming up this week, and I was not about to. De- it would have been delivered on that special day. I would have oh. been able to give you a special day. Really? You know? Yeah. After living in you know the the swimming pool for a while. It's like if I would not have killed you first. There's no pool. So no. I know it's like oh I couldn't have done it. Anyway, we've rattled on probably a little bit too much. We probably need to get right to Dutch Van Austin because a lot of people are waiting to hear Dutch. Right. Dutch Van Alston is the author of Demons Rising, the story of the Wayward Scout, book number one in the Life Behind Bars books, by Life Behind Bars book series. There you go, spit and it out. I know, I was struggling with that one, but he's also the author of the up and coming Rebellious Youth, the story of the lost child, which is book number two. So there you go. And now it's time for Dutch Van Austin in raw and unapologetic. Tis I, lover of motorcycles, eater of barbecue ribs, and all-around swell guy, speaking to you with my usual two co-hosts, Eloquence and Grace. And as usual, we speak to you from the Sound Studios, known as Dutch's Man Cave, located in the penthouse on the sun coast of Florida. As stated, I am Dutch Van Alston. I am the author of Demons Rising, the story of the Wayward Scout, book number one in the Life Behind Bars book series, and I am soon to be the author of book number two, Love of the Life Behind Bars book series, Rebellious Youth, The Story of the Lost Child. And as always, I am raw and unapologetic. Um, That book, book number two, is now, as I said last week, in the hands of my talented copy editor, who I mispronounced last week. Her name is Joyce Mockery, uh, not Mokri. Uh, I just love her anyway. I mean, she is just a natural, and she's, she's hard to get. Uh, huh? No, 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 no. Not like you playing hard to get bubbles. No, which which usually means what? Huh? Oh, I see. I see. You didn't say that you play hard to get. You what? You said when you play, it gets hard. Oh, that's clever. My apologies. Yeah. 
Don't flatter yourself. That's a physiological response from men. You should have learned that in health class from the teacher. Uh, no, no, not in the back of his AMC gremlin. No, I meant in the classroom. I know others were around. I met in an academic setting. Okay, you're... Anyway, you learned it, right? It's a natural physiological response from men. Okay, most men. Yeah, well, if they're hooked up to a ventilator, then you shouldn't be doing that anyway. Why, why are you at a nursing home anyway? Candy striper. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain that's not what they do. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't care what your supervisor Biff told you, okay? So men on life support get a uh, a break from that response, okay? They're, you can't hold them to that standard. You can't hold, no, you can't hold that against them. I see. You did try to hold that against them and it still didn't work? Okay. You know something? We're getting way off base here. You've wasted a good minute and a half of my life here. Just please go get me my beverage and... Uh, where was I? Oh, Joyce. Yes. Anyway, my copy editor, Joyce Mockery. I, I pronounced it wrong last week, like I said. Uh, I don't know what I would do without her. I mean, she is worth uh, every penny. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, a master of the English writing. Uh, I like her website name. It's onelastlookcopyedits.com. And I'm telling you, every writer says that phrase in his or her life uh, at least once. Because once it's in the publisher's hands, it's hard to change things. So I am ever so thankful for her for taking that last look for me. Um, because that is, I'm going to tell you something, that's just, it, it, once it's done, it's done. And you got to trust that the publisher's going to catch something that you didn't catch. Uh, anyway, speaking of book number two, we had our picture spread at the world famous Ride Hard Saloon Saturday. It went great. We had loads of fun. We really did. Uh, we had to avoid the crowd that we wanted originally because some ne'er-do-well, uh, you know, I don't know why I'm trying to sound intellectual, some scumbag called code enforcement on the owner, Jesse, uh, because uh, this anonymous said Jesse was open, quote, unquote, illegally. Now, I'm not going to tackle the illegal part, even though it's uh, pure uh, radio, 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 biscuit sauce. Uh, but code enforcement came out and ordered Jesse to leave the door unlocked. I'm not kidding. Leave the door unlocked at all times while he's inside. I'm assuming this grade two county civil service twit uh, doesn't know Jesse because Jesse recommended this grade two civil service employee take a sojourn to the netherworld. Um, the pure smugness and ignorance of this little unctuous toad. I mean, you have zero authority to, to demand that. You, you can't say you've got to leave your door unlocked. Uh, I mean, it's so far out of the scope of his or her duties. Uh, so this grade two civil service employee, who was a grade one horse's ass, by the way, uh, threatened to call Johnny Law, who also lacks any authority whatsoever to demand you keep your door unlocked. Uh, no fuzz came anyway. I am certain the uh, Manatee County Sheriff knows they have more important things to deal with and don't feel they need to enable some pea brains dream of being important. Um, so thank you to the Gladys Kravitz that ratted Jesse out in the first place. Uh, you know what, Gladys? Go watch Netflix. Go make Abner a salami sandwich. Or, or, or better yet... Let Abner give you some salami wrapped in some love instead. You know, maybe that's your problem to begin with. Hmm? Possibly. <sighs> anyway, so it was a skeleton crew there, but uh, we did a live feed, which is on my Life Behind Bars uh, series page. Uh, we did have a ball. We really did. Kit Andrew was phenomenal and really good natures. And Jen Z, Z uh, Jay-Z, the photographer, was uh, very professional and clearly knew her stuff. You know, we laughed, but we got a lot done. It, it, the perfect combination to any endeavor you undertake, at least in, in my opinion. You know, if you can't work and have fun, then there's just, there's just no point. Uh, I think it's going to make a great cover. I have not seen all the proofs yet. Uh, I will put some up um, of the on my Facebook page so you all can have a little peek and help me pick out which one's the best. Uh, I am excited. I really am. Um, so, 
today. I'm gonna break here. Hold on, bubbles. Yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna read a what? Yeah, I'm gonna read a letter. Chuck needs to dub some fake applause right here because I know I have not been reading a letter like I keep saying I am. Uh, but I do want to finish what I was discussing last week. Uh, it's a new week and it's kind of irrelevant now. But I already said last week that I would finish the story from last week about. Uh, how you respond proportionally to events so one does not panic or overreact, blah, 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 blah. I feel like I'm teaching a class. Um, so I think I mentioned one night I was in a pub in this little rinky-dink town called Montour Falls, which is a quaint little town in the Finger Lakes in upstate New York. Uh, there's a giant falls at the end of the main street. And it's really worth a quick Google search, Chiquagua Falls, um, in the hamlet of Montour Falls. I mean, years ago, we'd sit under it and drink beer and fornicate with loose women and ah, those were the days anyway uh i'm alone not just here because bubbles is here but at that little tub at that little pub i'm all alone uh we're trying to start a chapter of our club in the finger lakes area so i was kind of bar hopping and checking out bike nights and just trying to get a lay of the land um and a very legit and well-established MC rolled in. Uh, apparently, this pub I was in had a person who liked cheese because somebody called them. Uh, I'm not going to name the club that came in, but suffice it to say, they are widely known and have been around since the mid-60s. They were, uh, actually, they still are a very legit and respected. Uh, however, they were from the other side of the fence and did not want uh, the Rochester Coalition to expand in any way beyond that region of Lake Ontario. Uh, I was out front nursing a beers, and they pulled in, dismounted, uh, walked casually toward me, and asked that I go around to the side of the building. So, what's happening? Is this a good thing? Uh, not at all. There were six of them and one of me. Uh, when we went around to the side, they formed an arc around me because uh, we were adjacent to a building. So I had the building more to my back and I could see all of them. Now, here's the part where I want to say I ran up the side of the wall, did a backflip a la The Matrix and landed in a perfect four point prone position and then did two flip kicks, one spin kick, one empty to the rib cage and the other two ran off. But that is not what happened. So my first reaction was, yeah, okay, Dutch, this is not good. However, you're not going to die tonight. And I know that sounds morose, but I, I knew this was not uh, the situation. I knew the current climate in the biker world, and this was not a do or die scenario. Uh, unless I reacted poorly, I guess. But I was also just as confident, uh, more likely than not, I was going to have my ass handed to me because I knew what they were going to say, and I knew what they were going to want, and I wasn't going to have any of it. Um, so I truly did resolve to myself the fact that I'm going to walk away from this, but it's going to come at a big cost with some stitches and such. Uh, so much so that uh, this is weird how fast the human mind works, or should work, uh, but so much so that I thought to myself, you need to get your back to the crevice of the building, there was like this old chimney where the wall came out slightly to form the chimney. So I thought I, I need to get one good shot in and lessen the numbers and then put my back in that crevice to prevent anyone from coming up from behind me or directly beside me. You know, then the remaining five would be directly in front of me, you know, lessening the damage they could do. Uh, I mean, that's how fast it went through my brain. But I kept kind of gauging the conversation. You know, panic would have caused me to surrender my patch and run away, which was absolutely no option ever considered. Uh, but when people panic, they do cowardly things. Uh, I'm a lot of things. I'm a lot of negative things, but I, I'm not a coward. And uh, panic could also lead one to be overly confident and start running their mouth. Uh, that is almost always fear that makes uh, us guys do that. That's coming from a vantage point of surrender. It really is. I instead gave a short, quick responses, keeping eye contact to all of them. Uh, you need to take that patch off. No. You're going to take that off. No. Then we will help you. It stays. You guys are not starting a chapter in this area. 
And this was my response. I said, that decision has already been made. Notice I didn't say, oh, there's nothing you can do about it or anything like that. I just, I kind of took that hostility out of the, the dialogue and just said, that decision's already been made. No, it hasn't. I said, yes, it has. Now, one of the guys, I'm not going to mention his name, I've known, in, in the other club, I've known for 20 plus years. We were in the same club in the 80s and 90s until he had kind of a falling out. And uh, truth be told, he, he had a valid reason really but uh that's that's neither here nor there um uh, so he and i have had kind of this love hate for decades and uh, i ran into him actually like two years prior to this scenario and we had a good conversation he gave me a little biker hug and told me to stop by the clubhouse some night um but that night he did most of the talking and he told me one more time take it off or we're taking it off and I'm going to refer to him as Joe because I don't want to say his name. And I said, Joe, you know me and you know I'm not going to do that. And I said that very calmly, you know, without arrogance, but without a stammer in my voice. And he, and he glared at me and shook his head and said, I don't know you anymore. And and that's when I got quiet. It seemed like, like an eternity. Um, but it was an old-fashioned piss-on-a-tree contest that we men do. And, uh, you know, we all kind of stared at each other. And, and finally he said, you've been warned. And he rounded up his crew and, and left. Um, I, I, that was a proportionate reaction to the situation. I didn't show fear, but I didn't show arrogance or pretend I could whoop all six of them either because I couldn't. And they knew it. But in the long run, I think they respected my position and walked away with their heads up high still because... Uh, even though they didn't get what they wanted, they damn well sure knew that I knew they could have kicked the crap out of me whenever they wanted. Um, they actually followed me to the next watering hole, and I was starting to get a little bit agitated. So I thought, oh, what the hell? Just get this over with. I went into the men's room and waited a few minutes thinking, you know, just they're, they're going to come in. But nobody came in. Eventually, I just left. I was just tired of this little cat mouse crap for the night. Um as a quick follow-up, um, all but two of the members of my club showed up the very next week at that pub for bike night, and I'll just say it was uh, <laughs> it was a lot. I don't want to give the exact numbers, but eventually this club came down the road, and they revved their motors, but just kept right on going. I never had a problem with them again. Um, and, and what it boils down to is this. Panic is easy, but in my opinion, it's, it's never the right path. Because you, you have to live with yourself once that immediate crisis is over. All right, so... Ah, time, time. Ooh, bad time. All right, I'm not going to get to a letter. I, I do want to... Uh, I do all... I want you all to come back next week because uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit, pun intended, and we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, next week, I'm going to read a letter from Amy Henderson from Alex Bay, New York. I know that area well. Very good memories. Uh, memories. <clears throat> uh, anyway, she asks if there are stories behind biker nicknames, and I do have my favorite two that are that are very funny. One is Mad Dog, and the other is Magellan. Both are humorous anecdotes. Uh, so tune in and have a laugh, a giggle, a chortle, a snort, a snigger, a guffaw, a snicker, a hoot, a cackle, a titter, a chortle. Huh? I said that one already. Okay, thank you, Miss Perfect. I don't need your help to look foolish. I can do it all on my own. All right, so perfect time to end this. I'm going to call it a day. Please hit like on my Life Behind Bars book series Facebook page. Uh, check out my website, www.dutchvanalston.com, and peruse my book. Uh, visit by, blah, 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 blah. sign up for the newsletter. Okay, just hit like and on Biker Life Radio, and hit like on Chuck and Deb's show because they are two different pages. Chuck and Deb's show is part of Biker Life Radio, uh, and check out uh, my Facebook page because I am going to offer my book up front and pay me later due to people having a little or no real income at this time, to, and they need something to fill up their time. So please get my book and fill up your time. So, until next week, folks, remember, if you tell yourself to stop drinking, that means you're taking life-altering advice from a drunk that talks to themselves, and that's a bad life decision. 
And from my ever shrinking gray matter covered brain to your ears, this is Yabba Dabba Dush signing off. All right, welcome back. All right, hey, we've got uh, some interesting. This is going to be an interesting show. Yeah, where it's going to be quite different than our normal show because hey, it's just a different time that we're in. So we've got to improvise and make things a little bit different. So where are we starting off, Deb? We're going to start. Well, let's start off with you. Okay. Let Let's start off with the okay. biker doing good. And recently, Deb, this was your idea. You were recently seen on YouTube or uh, Facebook saying that uh, it was our idea, but it, it was. was really your idea. Well, I'm there to support you and all that good kind of thing, but it was really your brainchild. It's what you came up with it. So why don't you tell us, uh, our audience, a little bit about what you got started and a little bit about what we did last weekend and delivered to some people. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It was my brainchild, but we had several conversations about the situation prior to that. We wanted to find a way to give That's back true. to our local community. Um, but also we had met with and had on the radio show a couple of weeks ago, Neil Jones, and he has a strong passion for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And it's all about the children's um, cancer. And, and, and that touched my heart. So the one thing that I, as we kind of just kept talking and trying to formulate a plan of what we could do to give back locally is first of all, my thought is, you know, how many people on Facebook at this time like each other's post are putting up high school pictures for in honor of the high school seniors that don't have a chance to graduate. You know, how many people are doing good things for people, but yet who's really giving back? And so how I developed this idea is that first of all, I wanted to have people give if they can, because I know a lot of people have lost their jobs, but I know a lot of people haven't. I know a lot of people are able to work from home and still earn the income that they're earning. So those that still have the financial wherewithal to give to a charitable organization that is above and beyond one of the most amazing organizations around, St. Jude's, is that what if they gave $10 per meal and then we, out of our hearts and the donations of family and friends that have chosen and to give to us, prepared a meal and given that back to our local healthcare providers, those that are really what my dad and I were talking about it. And, you know, what he said is they're truly the army in today's army. They are fighting the fight on the front line as a medical net medical professional, healthcare professional. I think our, you know, emergency people that are, you know, ambulance people, firefighters, and the um, so law enforcement right are right there. They're the, the army. Even the people that, that are at the grocery stores. There's a lot of people. Absolutely. Those, those Tons. people that are working in the food. Absolutely right. So how could we give back? So the first step was, was to kind of put a price tag on it, if you will, and have people give $10 per plate. And so what we did actually it was so, I loved the story because we were sitting there at the table, like we do oftentimes kind of doing our brainstorming and figuring out how can we get to a solution. And so I said, you know, here's what we're going to do. We are going to do 20 meals this weekend. I don't know how we're going to make it happen. It's just out of our pockets and time and love for what we do. First of all, we've got a family recipe that no matter when and who I prepare that Mexican dinner for, people love it. So, and that is something that kind of comes back from my, my family heritage. It's something that I grew up on and I knew that, you know, if everybody else loved it, that's how we can bless others with the same feeling of a great meal. So I decided that that was going to be the ticket to this whole ex escapade. It was We were going to provide 20 meals to the health healthcare and medical professionals in a couple of our local hospitals, which I'd been in contact with. So that was piece number one. And then also what I wanted to do was those that can not necessarily participating in preparing the meal and delivering it is that they have the ability to give the $10 per plate in on and straight to St. Jude's as a fundraiser for that particular event. Very cool. It was a great idea. It was uh, quite complicated when you put it all together and we got to think it out and had to think it through. And then, of course, having to prepare the meal and then to deliver it and everything and get it done. And I was actually, I got to say, I was amazed at how well you did everything and followed through with everything and how everybody that we dropped it off to, both hospitals, were very appreciative of what they were receiving. So a big kudos 
to a lot of people. There's a lot of people Absolutely. that uh, you probably need to give some kudos to. Number one, it's your family. Yes. Your, your mother and father for donating some money to be able to go out and buy the goods in order to fix the meal. See, because without them, the money, you know, we would have to come up with that money, but they offered to do that. Is that correct? Absolutely right. So they helped to, with their support and encouragement, is to help to provide the supplies in order for us to be able to do this. Now, yes, it is our time and it is my time. I've only prepared this meal for a family of four or six <laughs> at the most, and now I'm making 20 plates. So it was a little bit of a task, but, you know, I, I was able to kind of put my recipe and my thought process in motion in order to make that multiplied a number of times. There was a little bit of quirks here and there, but, you know, it was fantastic. So my thought was, again, both hospitals were extremely appreciative of us. We did, delivered 10 meals to Lakewood Ranch um, Medical Hospital, and we delivered 10 meals to Manatee Memorial Hospital. And so as I've developed, again, my, my original concept is to do this for 100 meals, and that would make $1,000 giving back to St. Jude's. So to me, that number just is very, very palatable, if I can use that term. And so that's 20 meals per week at a minimum for up to four or five weeks. So the idea is, is that who else is on that front line besides the hospitals? Well, you know what, I think this next week, I have decided that it's going to go to our law enforcement, because they are truly on the front lines as well. They don't have a choice to get up and go to work. They're in the firing squad every single day and every time they show up. So I, my goal is to date donate at least 10 meals this time to Sarasota um, County Sheriff's and Manatee County Sheriff's Departments as well for this week. Well, that's a great idea. I would actually even, you know, say some other things, but I guess you have plenty of time for other people to donate to. And uh, so hopefully they get to the people that are, you know, I, I'm, I'm, an, uh, what, I'm, an, I'm a pessimist a lot of times. Yes. So I worry that you drop off the meals and the, the people that are actually out there doing the footwork and doing the real work, they don't end up getting the meals. But that has nothing to do with us. Correct. The it, whole we, idea is that we're giving something back. Correct. That's right. We are the givers. And however it ends up being received and, you know, taken from that point on is, is not out of it's out of our hands. We can't do that. We just have to be the giving heart. Yeah, that's true. So so there's a lot of people that contributed that have supported you thus far how much money have you raised so far deb well i'm sorry you haven't well you've raised it how much money have you raised so far for saint jude's well i i don't have an exact number yet what i can calculate right now is over 300 uh 335 dollars right now has been collected in my donation button if you will on facebook for this event so the idea is is again my goal is a thousand dollars i would love to say that biker life radio the chuck and deb show was able to raise that kind of money toward the St. Jude's event, which is the Talamina rally coming up the end of May. So I'd love to show up at that rally, share that good news with them and be part of that. And this is how we did it in a little bit of a different way, being remote from them. So now talk a little bit about how you got this started and how you reached out to people and how people just started to participate. You've had a lot of people that are going to contribute some things on your next trip. And you've had some people who can, who have contributed money. You've had some people contribute uh, items in order for these things to be delivered. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. It has truly become a network and a community of more than just us. And so first of all, those that have given to St. Jude's, thank you, thank you, thank you. I could not thank you enough. And the list is long. And if you go to our Facebook page, though, they will be posted there. So I don't want to miss anyone. So I'm not going to call names. Also, I have had those that have given to St. Jude's. One person in particular said, I would love to be able to do some sort of dessert cookies or brownies. Can I do that for the next go around? And so so well, who was that? That was Brandy. And I want to say thank you, Brandy. She, yeah, that's she cool. doesn't have an opportunity. And again, it's just amazing the stories that come out of this, but she doesn't oftentimes have an opportunity to cook those type bake. of things and bake those things in her home because of uh, diabetes. And so she said, this is one way that I would love to be able to give back. So she's kind of on the list of be, being a giver next time, which is this next coming weekend for those in the um, profession of law enforcement. And also, um, I've also had Nicole has reached out and said, you know, how can I help? So she's going to start doing the bagging of a few of the extra items and the condiments that go along with the meal. Because truly, it was just us, you know, we were bagging cheese, we were bagging lettuce, we were I was, you know, chop chopping and dicing up tomatoes and putting those in the bag as well. And there's a little bit of black olives. And so this whole and then the sauce on top of yeah, that. Sauce, so, yeah. you know, the sauce the is 
like the special ingredient of well, it all. And plus but... the way you get, you have to season the meat. Now, I've changed that recipe over the years, but we don't want to talk about meat. Keep going, No, Deb. absolutely. <laughs> so it does. It, hopefully everyone that's had it so far has enjoyed it. Garlic. And um, yeah, so it, lots of great stuff. And, you know, my, my goal at the end, and this is kind of, I'm just going to kind of give a little teaser of my secret. And the other piece piece of the puzzle is we do have someone in our neighborhood that works with Cisco, and he just graciously reached out and helped with some of the food containers. And so he and I have been working about what what's the, his name. His name is Mike, and so Mike has been a great contributor to this event already. And you know, we just were talking um, earlier today about some ways to strategically make this happen for the future and make it easier on us to buy a little bit in bulk, and then also how they can help that too. So I'm excited to move forward in that that direction i think maybe they should add hot dogs he should get some hot dogs well that's that's something else maybe and, maybe and my he should thought get some is Vienna hot dogs here's the secret I, I forgot to mention that's an easy one for people the one thing i would love to do is to actually all of us have been working together to give to others at the end what i'd like to do is i would like to give back and make this meal for those that have contributed so that's kind of my like end of oh, that's the, a great idea the party um party so that's my thought anyway that's a great idea and then then at the very beginning right when you posted this uh you had a neighbor, next door neighbor, reach out almost immediately. Is and that right? Immediately. As soon as I mentioned that this was an idea in my brain, she said, I'm in. How can I help? And I said, well, I'm not quite ready for that yet, but I'll keep you posted and I'll let you know. And she instantly, the minute I put the page out that we're ready to roll, she was like, here's what I want to give. And she was so gracious with her gift. You know, she provided 10 meals for those in the hospital. And I'm just so thankful that we've got people out there that just want to, bikers that just want to do good. And, and, and people. People in community that just wants to do yeah, good. And really just uh, what a giving heart. Yes. And a lot of people out there with a real true giving heart. And Deb, I've got to say, you've got a real true giving heart. And I congratulate you on the success that you've had so far. And I hope that it continues. Me too. And the other thing that I hope is that it picks up. Maybe yes. it'll pick up around the country yes. and that somebody will go out and do the same kind of thing because it truly is a, well, you called it a double blessing. I did. Yes. It's a triple blessing. Mm, it would be, yes. You're blessing the people who get the food. Right. You're blessing the St. Jude's. Yes. And you are blessing, you tell me, I left it blank. Maybe I'm wrong? No, I think we're blessing, blessing everybody because those that give, give out of the kindness of their heart. And so again, for me. Okay, it, well, I'm sorry, I got it mixed up because I'm sipping on a drink here. <laughs> so so it is a double blessing because the person that you do, the person that gets the meal, they're being blessed. And then St. Jude is being blessed given. with the donation. Okay. Absolutely. I'm just right. trying to make it another triple one. Well, I'm the triple one will it. be at the end when we all celebrate together and I make this dinner for everyone. So Neil has already asked me, can I send he, him my special recipe? And there is no way, Neil. Why? Sorry. Why? I, mean, I don't understand to, that, Deb. I'll have to make it for him because it's the sauce. The sauce is what What are you going to do? Make it and it? ship it to him? I'll make it maybe when we're there in the area. I don't know. I don't know how I can do it, but, but I'll... But we're going to have Mexican food when we're there. Well, that's true. So I don't know. I'll find a way. No, Maybe I can freeze it and send it I don't know why you wouldn't him. give him the recipe. Ah, Just charge know. him $80. dollars Okay, $80 per Times person. Times two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the registration. You're listening, Neil? Yeah, that's right, Neil. If you're catching this, $80 You would appreciate two, it because I'll you know it. how to ask for it. That's Neil it. knows how to ask. He does. Neil knows how to get people to donate because he does what, Deb? Because he, he asks. asks. A -S -S he asks for the M-O-N-E-Y. He right. asks. Yeah, that's And it. that's how he gets the donations he has in order to, to support the children at St. Jude's. Right. And he does this with a clear thorough passion and you've really got to hand it to man and we cannot wait to meet him yes. it's going to be an ultimate grand time to be able to meet him and go on the rise that he's got scheduled and we want to encourage all of our listeners to be able to go on that ride with us right and uh, go out and support saint jude support this ride support neil because he's done this a uh, number of years now and it continues to grow and grow and grow right absolutely right so please if you want to join us on the ride, it's over Memorial Day weekend. I don't know exactly the details of anything quite yet, but that's what my plan is, is that we will be there in Texarkana, Arkansas. And we will be there. The country will open back up. It is going to open back up in May. 
Right. I am confident. I am I am hopeful that it will open back up in May and hopefully we will all get our lives somewhat back to normal. It's going to take a little bit of time because I'm going to have, I don't know how I'll get over a month long hangover. So it might take a month to get over that hangover. Well, what I keep hearing everybody is that we're going to have a month long like exercise program in order to lose the weight that we gained by all of us staying at home and eating all this stuff well i sure have gained a lot of weight i can barely move i can't i hardly see out of my eyes and because my hair's grown so long (laughs) and my beard's gotten so thick because i haven't shaved since this whole thing started nothing nothing have i shaved deb's freaking out tmi way too much information for everybody Oh, really? Yeah. Why is that too much information? I don't know. If they have a half an idea of how much hair this man has, oh my gosh. Well, now I actually do have hair. You ran your fingers through my hair today. I did. Don't tell everybody our secrets. Well, why does that have to be a secret? I don't know, because I enjoy running my hair through your hand through your hair. (laughs) You never used to be, because I never had any hair. I know. You just, you cut it real short. It's not that you don't have And speaking of this, um, you know, one of the things that we talked about, and I still want to encourage people to do this as well, is one of the ideas that we had, and yours was the outcome but one of the ideas i had is that we need to continue to support our bartenders the people that we go to normally like the people that cut our hair the things that you go to on a monthly basis we need to support those people thinking about your bartenders right they're not getting the tips that they normally would get so you know i was trying to think out a way how we could give back to people like that and to uh people that like nicole that cuts my hair right you know it just was on my mind i texted her does she have a paypal account she does but she she didn't know how to use it so that didn't sort of help me right (laughs) because i wanted to help her i wanted to bless her and i'll figure out a way to get that done but there's other things out there so i want to encourage our listeners keep this rolling keep keep money flowing right you know i know that uh, there's a lot of heartache and a lot of different things going in the world today and and maybe you're one of the ones that have lost your job and maybe you don't have money coming in right now and we can feel for you because we've been there Mm -hmm. and uh, so we understand and we don't understand about being there in a time like this but i think it's all the same you have no money nonetheless right and this, this this probably adds a lot to it as well but you'll come out on top. Mm-hmm. I, I really believe it. I believe if you stay positive, focus on what you want. And this is a time, and we're going to come out with something that we're going to get out. We don't have it quite ready to announce today. But we're going to come out with a product. It's going to call, it's called in, Be Inspired to Reinvent Yourself. Yes. And this is going to allow people that can take this time right now to work on themselves. This is a perfect time to reinvent yourself. So when at the end of April... You're ready to go and you're a new person. Maybe you don't want to go back to that job that you were at. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to do something different. Maybe you want to change careers. It could be a number of different things. And it might be the slightest little shift in what you used to do, used to be how you were, to that that could change your life entirely. It could be just a small little incidental change in actions, behaviors that changes your entire world. Yeah, it's so true, and we, we want to do this for everybody because we believe this is a prime time to be able to do it. We're going to and we're gonna start a 30-day challenge. That's right. To reinvent yourself. So, you know, Deb and I have reinvented ourselves a number of times over the years. As a matter of fact, we have reinvented ourselves to be on the radio today and do the podcast that we're doing. Two years ago, was it? No, is it two years? Yeah, years ago? a year and a half year, ago, maybe. A year ago. Yeah, we were starting to formulate our ideas. And who would have known that we are doing the things that we're doing? And I'm not where we are where we are, but doing the things that we're doing and having the opportunity to share and bless other people. And that's, to me, what the bottom line is, is what can I do to impact and improve someone else's life? Yeah. But there will be more on that in the future. So right now, we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Stay tuned. Our sponsor today is Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy. If you desire to be a leader in this fast-growing cosmetology industry, then contact Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado at 719-390-9898. Again, 719-390-9898. Or visit coloradosprings.tonyguy.edu. For more information about Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy, call 208-930-1276. Again, that number is 208-930-1276. Or visit them at coeur d'alene.tonyguy.edu. 
or visit the Chuck and Deb Show sponsor page for more information. So, Deb, you know, I sidetracked everything like I always do. Is there a way that maybe you could give people information on how they could support the program that you're doing? Absolutely. So if you just go to the Deb Bell page and or Biker Life Radio page is where I've posted everything, you're more than welcome to, there's a donate button there on all of my posts. And the good thing about, it goes, all the donations go straight to St. Jude's. If you are interested in making the a checkout rather than doing it electronically online, please private message me and I will give you the address to mail a check to. And I'm more than happy to take a check. I just want the check made payable to St. Jude's. So everything is going straight to St. Jude's. The rally information is the Talamina Rally cruising for St. Jude. And it is scheduled May 21st through the 23rd at uh, Texarkana, Arkansas, as I mentioned. And it's actually going to be, um, the hotel is a little bit, I don't know. It's it's They're filling changed, up. right? It's all filled up, and now he's on to hotel number two. So the information that's out there, we're actually staying at the Best Western that's right beside the Holiday Inn there. And if you need a block of rooms, please let us know. We'll be happy to pass the information along so you can register as well. $80 registration fee. I know, it's unusual. I, I have never heard of a rally that charges a registration fee, but he pro- provides all of your meals, a t-shirt, all of the entertainment, everything for those full it's three well days. Worth it. You cannot pass it up. It goes to a great Plus, cause. Plus, it goes to a great cause. And what I think is phenomenal about what Neil's doing is he's leading a couple of different rides, oh, rides so that man. us that are not from the area get to go do a ride in that area from someone that knows those roads and trails all so well. So true. Well, very good. Uh, so please, uh, if you can, support uh, Deb's project, which will in turn support uh, the Saint ride Jude's for a reason. And All our right. local air, absolutely. So cruising for a reason. Another Bikers Doing Good segment that I want to talk about is the Thantos, and if I'm saying that wrong, I apologize, the Thantos Motorcycle Club actually delivered Easter treats to children at the QEQM's Rainbow Ward, and I think that's phenomenal. So as I started to think about that, okay, so what is Thantos? Um, They're actually out of, they're in England. They're a division or a district in the Kent, England area, and I think that's pretty phenomenal that bikers around the globe are coming together to do good things. And so they actually were able to bring things to that hospital for the children. Each year, they usually have an Easter egg run. And unfortunately, obviously, because of the times, they could not do that. So what they did is instead, they just made it a great time for the children there with an Easter celebration. So kudos to those guys. Great job, guys. Again, bikers doing good all the way around the world. We appreciate all your bike, all you bikers out there and all that you give back to your communities. Good job, guys. Absolutely. All right, shifting gears real quick here. You know, we're such in a strange time that there's a lot of strange things going on. Right. So we're going to have uh, a what the freak what com- the freak <laughs> coming up. But this is not a what the freak. This is just a really cool story. Uh, maybe a lot of our listeners uh, have seen this. It's about a 93-year-old woman uh, that gets a special beer delivery after her uh, picture her, her uh, goes viral. Okay, yeah. so what she did, Deb, is she uh, actually had this sign up that said, I need more beer, explanation <laughs> mark, explanation mark. She's got a nice smile on her face, and she's holding up a Coors Light. Actually, a Coors Light was one of my first beers that I drank legally. Anyway, so she got that, and actually, she, this, it went viral, what she did. And uh, I think it's been seen over like two and a half million times on the video by uh, by the radio station KDKA. Not a radio station. I think it's a television station. But wasn't she holding that up for her granddaughter or daughter well, that they was did. driving by? So that was kind of, I think, the whole they theory. They did take a picture. A Relations took to... a picture. Yeah. yeah. But she's been getting donations from a lot of people. And the best thing is, is that Coors is going to send her 10 cases of beer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I she's mean, set for wh- the year. What an advertisement for Coors, right? right? Right. So good job. And congratulations to her, a 93-year-old woman. And I like what she says. She's, I remember I read it, and she said something like, well, it's just really good for somebody young like myself. <laughs> <laughs> See, so you can be 93 and still consider yourself being young. Absolutely, and drinking beer and loving life. And then, you know, inside. you've got a lot of different things going on out there. I actually saw something, I came across something about a um, about lawyers and a judge. 
And uh, tell us more, please <laughs> tell us more. Well, apparently, a Browdy, a Broward County judge, Dennis Bailey, made the plea in a letter published by the West Western Bar Association news outlets. Uh, reported, uh, it talked about that. Uh, is here's what it says. It is remarkable how many attorneys appear inappropriate on camera. Bailey said in a letter, one male lawyer appeared shirtless and one female attorney appeared still in bed, still under the covers. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about because they're having to do this through Zoom or some type of a way. They're still able to try to conduct business, right. but they're doing it uh, digitally, electronically. And so these people, these attorneys, <laughs> apparently are showing up without any shirt on, laying in bed and just doing it. So this judge... Felt it was necessary in a volcano. You got to, you know, Broward County, Broward right. Circuit. I right, guess. and that's Maybe like the-, the number one place for the coronavirus in our state is down in that area. So, the, come on, you got to professional it up a little bit. Yeah, so that was quite interesting. And then speaking of Zoom. Yes. Lots going on with Zoom. We just did a Zoom the other day with uh, your with your family. Yes, it was your father's uh, birthday, so we celebrated that by by getting him on Zoom. He didn't know it. It was a surprise it was Zoom. A surprise. Yes, it was wonderful. And everybody sung happy birthday to him, and then we all chatted and said what we were all doing. I didn't say a word because I'm not part of the family. They've exiled me. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. No but, wonder they've exiled you. Keep going. Yeah. So anyway, so you know what's interesting is there's a lot going on with Zoom because what they're doing is they're Deb, there's a new bomb. Uh oh. It's called a Zoom bomb. Zoom bomb, rather Zoom than a- bomb. There's Zoom bombing instead of a photo bomb. Yeah. There's Zoom bombing. Oh my. As gosh. pranks. So uh, what I found out was is that they are re- that somehow they got all these Zoom accounts which we have to check to see if they have ours. Right. And what they're doing is they're Zoom bombing. Because there's over 500,000 hacked accounts on Zoom that are actually now being offered for free on the dark web. Oh, my goodness. Now, who would have thought that we're trying to do the right thing, go digital, go remote, and then all of a sudden now we have to be worried about our remote accounts being there's hacked a, because there's this dark side to it. There's always going to be rebels, Deb. Absolutely. I think I live with one. So, you know, um, that's real interesting. So if you've got Zoom, you might want to be real extra careful. We're going to have to look into it as well. And then uh, there, there was one where, where they actually got hijacked. Somebody hijacked. Well, actually, I don't think it was hijacked. What I think this was by bree- breezing over it, I didn't read it all in complete detail, but the, there was a Zoom meeting that was hijacked, and apparently what was going on, it sounded like what it was was a town meeting to me. Oh, goodness And then the gracious. people, somebody had some porn or something playing in the background, and so you can hear the climax and all this stuff going on on porn. So, so somehow that was going on, and then all of a sudden they showed the this picture of these two i think it was two gay lovers uh that they showed so that was one incident that took place i think that would make an interesting town hall meeting don't you think <laughs> <laughs> well could you imagine being on there and you hear all that and right. I, it's amazing and that somebody did, it. And they didn't know how to mute them out or whatever the situation was and i may have all my facts mixed up i'm sorry i've had a drink or two so i apologize if i don't if i'm not entirely accurate but i am stuck at home what deb we're all stuck What's at so home. What's so much for the long pause? I don't know. I just can't help myself. But we're all stuck at home. Okay. So, yeah. It, and people that may not know what Zoom is, we have to realize that okay, maybe I not all of our listeners may you, know Deb. what Zoom is. This is a radio show. Is that yeah. Zoom is a digital recording tool. It's like a live where everybody can be live in one group. Live webinar, right? So you can have, you know, hundreds of people all on this same video chat and you get to see everybody. So the idea is, is that you could be literally in your pajamas in bed doing this video chat and business meeting, whatever the case may be. And what the judge is asking for is please like kind of just pull yourself together a little bit. Yes. And uh, if you want to find out what one is about, make sure you follow Biker Life Radio and the Chuck and Deb show along with Dutch's page as well. And you will get, uh, which is uh, the Life Behind Bars, Bars book, book series. series. And you'll probably get notified when we do have a live happy hour. Absolutely. Involving That's Zoom. Coming up. And maybe somebody will Zoom bomb our asses. No, no Zoom bombing. <laughs> anyway. There was also involving Zoom, there was an interesting one where out of Liverpool, a, co- a comedy club, yep. they actually, the the, uh, the cops raided them. The police raided them uh, over the weekend. What after, for? Well, what happened was is they aired a recorded show 
and on Facebook, and they thought it was actually live and happening. So the Liverpool cops went out to the comedy show to investigate the matter, only to find it was just a recording. So they were busting him for like not social distancing or something crazy like that when it was just a recorded show. You got it, baby. Oh, goodness. So crazy things are happening, but a nice thing that's happening that a lot of people might want to know, Deb, right now, yeah. which was our secret. No, it really wasn't. But um, Taco Bell is giving out a free taco on Tuesdays. Oh, my god! You do not have to make a purchase, and you can show up and just get your free taco so, while that, supplies yeah, last. Yeah, if you stay in your car and do the drive through then everything's good because you're still socially distanced. I can't believe that we missed it. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to put it on the calendar for next Tuesday to make sure we get to Taco Bell for a free taco. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You make better tacos, so you just keep making okay, them here. That's right. So we're probably running a little bit out of time. I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Um, I know that there was a couple of things going on with some cops out there. Uh, these guys are, you know, I guess they're doing their job. Uh, there was a viral video that went out of a cop, uh, cops actually dra uh, dragging a man off a Philly bus uh, because he wasn't wearing a mask Deb, on the bus, on the transit system. I think that was um They dragged him off. Crazy. I watched the video. Yeah. They actually dragged him off, pulled him off. Uh, he dropped his cell phone. Somebody picked it up. Um, and then they threw it back down on the ground after he came out. Oh, my god! You know, instead of handing it to him, they just tossed it on oh, the ground. Why would you pick it up to begin with? That's my thought. It's like, come on. Right. You know. Yeah. So anyway, so that was uh, that uh, a lot of people got upset about that. And I could see why. And the guy was calling him out. He's like, I want your badge number. <laughs> I want your badge number. And these guys confident. walked out. You know, in a way, I sort of feel sorry for these guys because they're they're doing a job. They're being told what to do. Right. You know, I often picture myself in that position. If somebody was to tell me something that I didn't feel was about my values, about what I should do, but I still do it because I had to get paid. Right, that's you know, a what, tough call. You know, it, and that, this is what it comes down to for these police officers, these deputies that are out there. You know, are you know, it's like people have talked about it. They're going to go out and get our guns, or they're going to come take our guns from us. Right, you know, but I understand. I think you there's know, some if, some people that'll say, "Hey, no, I'm not going that far." Sure, absolutely. But I also think that they, like you said, they're just doing a job that they've been told to do. Which is, if if you're not social distancing, if you're not wearing a mask, if you're not doing whatever the criteria is that you're supposed to do, then all of their all that they're doing typically is coming out to enforce that guideline. Yeah, but uh, you know, stuff like that just seems a little bit extreme to me. I don't think it's necessary. I don't even think they sure. should be doing it. Um, you know, you know, if the guy doesn't want a mask, want to wear a mask, well, right. He's, everybody else on the bus should be wearing a mask, he's right? Not impacting. So he always going to harm himself. Is that not correct? Yeah, and I don't all get the things it. That he's touching this crazy so. stuff out there. Let me tell you how much crazy stuff is out there. Let me read to you some crazy headlines, and I guess you got something. I've Deb. got something too that I want to share. But there was a Florida man that put a giant <laughs> yeah. roll of toilet this paper is the times in we his live in. Front, front yard. Now, imagine that. He actually, it was in Collier County, so if you're anywhere near the Naples area and want to go by and check it out, then do and please let us know. But this particular gentleman actually works, has, has the wood... The Who Would Wonder Company. And so he took this gigantic Giant. roll of a said toilet paper made it, yeah. and hung it between his two trees, two trees <laughs> in his front yard. His front yard. I think that's like, go The dude. HOA will be on your you-know-what. That's right. And, and <laughs> the, thing, the funny thing was is he only had three actual rolls himself as far as a oh, household geez. to use. So it was just a way to get back to all those that are hoarders. I thought that, that was funny. That is funny. It is a funny thing. What else you got? Anything before I go and wrap it up in the headlines? Wrap it so up. Here's some crazy headlines for you. We didn't really do what the freak, I don't think. Well, there is a lot of what the freak here. So here's some crazy headlines. Illinois mayor found at bar, I'm sorry, Illinois mayor, mayor's wife, found at bar violating the stay-at-home order. Oh, I like that one. Uh, goats take over a street of, uh, I, I'm a lousy reader. Goats take over street of a town as residents stand, stay inside. Doctors, doctor pulled over for speeding. Trooper gives her in ninety five mask. <laughs> this will this will be a, the devil like this one. Sex toys take off amid Columbia's coronavirus quarantine. Oh geez. <laughs> okay. All right. Eat. <laughs> Eat, I can't read that one, so I'm not going to. Eat Hanoi's chef spread joy with 
with Corona Burger. Actually, I read a little bit about that one. That was actually a green tea burger that bun that the guy in Hanoi, Vietnam is making on his burgers. I thought it was pretty hilarious when you saw it because it did have all the spikes like the coronavirus. Oh, good. Funny. Who, who let the dogs out as Spaniards defied coronavirus lockdown? Okay. Hedge fund manager apologized for wiping saliva on Hong Kong Mc- Metro Rail. Oh, that's disgusting. The times we live in. Absolutely right. So we just want to be sure that you follow us on Biker Life Radio on our Facebook page and be sure to check out previous podcasts and subscribe and like our podcast as well. And you can always go to Google and say, Google, play the Biker Life Radio podcast. All right. We're so grateful and thankful that you've joined us today. We hope you've enjoyed this little strange show and we hope that you'll be back next week. Again, my name is Chuck and Deb, and thank you for being part of Biker Life Radio with Chuck and Deb, where your ride never ends. Until next time, ride hard, ride free. See you You've soon. been listening to Biker Life Radio with Chuck and Deb, heard each Wednesday afternoon right here on 1490 AM WWPR. We thank you for listening and invite you to join us next week.